Hi everybody. Welcome back. Uh, well, I thought I would do a part three. And, well, there's a few things I actually didn't cover in the first two. And uh, just to keep myself on track, got a list. So, let's just start with the original retail. Uh, the original retail of this playset was anywhere, I remember seeing it in my store, a place called Tops and Toys. Uh, it went for about $50 and it was trying to be cleared out. Now I remember seeing also in the Consumers Distributing Magazine, it was around $80, but I'd also seen it at Kmart for about $100. I don't know how I remember it, I just remember it because I really wanted this playset. Um, a couple of the other features and stuff that I didn't talk about and uh, parts I actually didn't talk about were I actually didn't talk about these screws. They go here. Actually, they go in behind the eyes of the lion and there's one here and there's a few screws to hold the main base onto the platform. You probably saw them in the previous video. Uh, you need those screws. You need any screws, but as long as they fit in there, these are actually not... Um, they're not originals, they're just uh, some screws that I had lying in a box and I made sure that they matched up with the original ones that I did have. I had one original one and one that looked original but I don't think it was. So I measured them up and they worked out fine except uh, they're not original so that's the, only th that's the only thing that's, you know, about that. But you need them because the platforms in between tend to slide out because the pull of the monorail track itself. Um, I'm sure that's why a lot of them are broken because the Eternia set doesn't really fit together as good as it should. Uh, at least I've never seen, this was the first one I'd ever seen complete so but uh, I mean even in the the ads and stuff they they look like they they fit right but uh, you need the screws in order for it to sit together right or else one of your floors is going to be popped out one day because the track will pull it out. Um, oh, one of the other things I didn't talk about and was actually asked was this red stabilizer on the back. Is it necessary? Yes, actually it is because there's a groove in the track. Um, my camera's on a tripod. Just look at on, on my other video. You'll see both the, uh, the stabilizer and the track. And it keeps it from swinging all crazy because if you put full batteries in this thing and set it off without a figure, it's going to go crazy. It's just... It, it, I don't, it's not advised to do that, especially if you're trying to show it off. Um, so, yeah, again, uh, talking about uh, parts and stuff, that's, that's definitely necessary because you need it to keep your, your monorail going full and steady. Uh, prices. <clears throat> prices on this uh, playset are not cheap. If you want one boxed, you're looking probably about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. That's what the guy on said on Toy Hunter that he would sell it for about fifteen hundred dollars uh, boxed, but he bought it for a thousand. And it, buying it for a thousand would be a it's it's a real deal. He paid a fair price to the lady. I'm not bashing the toy back the collector because I actually kind of like his show, but a thousand dollars for a boxed one is is a definitely a fair price if you can get it for that like congratulations well done because the box itself can go for like two hundred dollars i won't bother with the box i won't bother with the comic i won't bother with the instructions because i've done all my homework and i figured it out and i just don't need a piece of paper and besides the pieces of paper can go for a hundred dollars like like that's I fully believe that's greed right there. I mean, yes, I know that they're hard to get, but come on, $100 for a piece of paper? Like, you're out of your mind. Um, yeah, and trade and the parts are not cheap either. eBay is usually where you'll find them. You can find also dealing with people on heman.org. Uh, but it's... F mm, they're pretty... I found a few pieces, but not a lot on heman.org. Like, when I was starting out, um, all the common pieces started to pop out quite... You know, you knew exactly what they are. Common pieces I found were the uh, the grappling hooks were definitely common. Um, the towers are easy to find. The levels are easy to find. The cannons easy to find. The weapons not so much. And then you're getting down to like where I had to find parts. Like uh, um, I had to find the elevator that was tough to find. I had to find the lift, which was it was pretty easy to find actually because the lifts get broken. And yeah, so that's that's pretty tough. All the rest I didn't really have to look for. I don't know how rare it is to find a jaw. I don't know how rare it is to find a gargoyle. Uh, I haven't seen many gargoyles up, so but then again, I'm only looking at them as I look on eBay. Um, so 
Another thing I must stress indeed is a room to store it. You need a room for this thing. It is huge. It's enormous. Like this thing like stretches across. It's at least three feet across or four feet. Like it's huge. And then the depth is at least two feet away from the wall. And like from the wall to the front of this is at least another three feet. And like you need room behind it. Like the, the, the bench isn't, isn't wide enough. It's sitting on another piece of glass just to keep it on there. Uh, like, yeah, you need a room to, to, to display it, especially if you want to, like, set the whole thing up. Um, now, there's a few variations I touched on briefly. Uh, the European version, let's move that so we can get a better view. The European version has blue eyes and a gray cannon. Uh, nothing else really have I seen that was too unusual. I've never seen the stickers up close of the, uh, of the European one. Uh, now missing parts. No, I already went over that. So, yeah, that's about it. So in closing, well, I'm sure the, the burning question, is this playset worth it? Wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a good one because I'm a huge He-Man fan. I love Masters of the Universe, uh, I'm, but I'm selective about what I won't buy every classic. Like, I'm sorry, but the Filmations, the Filmations are, they're ter I hate them. They're gay. I mean, well, they're just dumb. I don't like them. Sorry if there's a, if I offended anybody out there, but, uh, and I have all the play sets, but I don't like the Fright Zone. I just don't like it. I think it's more of an outpost. Um, even the main classics and stuff, like, I have no desire to spend $180 on Shadow Weaver. I, up to $300 on Shadow Weaver. Uh, 100 for one dollar. Like, these, the classics, I understand, they're cool and they're hard to get, especially with the, with the, the Horde Trooper selling out in six minutes. Um, I mean, I understand why they would go up in value, but I, you know, when you collect toys and stuff, a lot of it, a lot of the fun is taken out when, uh, you know, they're so expensive and then you get it and you're like, wow, this really wasn't worth it. But as for the place, uh, as for the place at, um, Eternia, it's worth it if you're a fan because it is, it's impressive. It's an impressive place set. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, and I've seen the Hive, I've seen the new Turtles one that they put out, the new Nickelodeon Turtles base. It's huge. It's awesome, actually. But it doesn't have what this does. And what this does, has, is just, like, you got the combination of Snake Mountain, you've got Grayskull, and you've got this new tower. Apparently, Hordak built it. But if you're a person who has kids, um, I don't recommend it, because there's a lot of uh, breakable parts and stuff, and they're probably going to want to play with it. But if you're a guy like me, um, yeah, if you've got the money, like, go for it, do it. And uh, it's kind of hard not to look at. Like, even uh, my wife comes down and she still says, like, wow, that, that playset's just huge. It's, it's huge. So that's it, really. Um, I want to thank a few other people, like anybody who's commented and, uh, I guess, retro blasting. Thank you guys for uh, subscribing. I like your videos too, the uh, one on the Death Star, the uh, the Tower Death Star, the guy does a complete rebuild and shows you all the parts and stuff to uh, look out for, like which tabs should be intact. It's a great review, it's very in-depth, just like what I had done here. And uh, so go and check him out, Retro Blasting. Um, and I guess that's about it guys. I have a couple more projects, I've actually done something, I felt inspired, and uh, so another video will be coming here very soon. But thank you again, and for Eternia, is it worth the money? Let's just get back down to it before I danced all over that question. I think it was worth it. It was worth it because I paid a decent price for it. It's not worth $1,200. It's not worth $1,500. It's worth about $750 in good shape. In great shape, $1,000. That's fair. In box, if you're, if you're asking for box, you might as well pay your $1,200. But it's, if you're buying in box, then you've got the money to pay for it. So yeah, from about 650 to 1200 is where they range, but I wouldn't pay any more than probably $650, but I, uh, I had to piece the thing back together. So thank you again, guys, and uh, thanks for listening to my rambling at the end, and we'll show you some new stuff in a couple of days. Take care.